Oh my God. Oh my God. SM Fest 2022. SM Fest 2022. Now, I want to change the rules. When I say SM Fest 2022, say disrupt you. SM Fest 2022. Now, you didn't say like you meant it. SM Fest 2022. Put your hands together for yourself, guys. All right, let's get seated, let's get seated and have fun. And today is, is a testimonial to the fact that the eastern part of Nigeria has woken up the giants in us. Put your hands together for yourself. You know, I travel around the country, I travel around the world, and sometimes I come home, it's like a dead city. I've always wanted for something like this to happen. And today, I am alive, and it's happening in my lifetime. Please, let's put it together for, for ourselves. Now, a lot of things have been said today. I mean, these are titans. Please, I want you to put it together for Mrs. Choma Eze, for that wonderful, wonderful teaching. Then clap for my lovely sister, Mrs. Nelly. You guys are clapping like you're not grateful. You are clapping like I said it. If I was going to give you a million dollars, how would you clap? Now, I want you to also celebrate Mr. Emeka Nobis, please. Where is that my brother, Joe Fraser, right? Joe Fraser? Cruz, right? Joe Cruz? Cruz with Joe. Where is he? Is he outside? Please, I want you to give him the loudest ovation. And our very own export to the world, Mr. Fonny Sabinus. You know, before I start, how many minutes do I have? It will not work. It's not going to work. Okay. And then I have my brother here, Mr. Obina. Am I correct, sir? Please put your hands together for Mr. Obina, who just flew in from London. Am I correct? From Lagos. Okay. So, 99% of the people here are going to be very poor for the rest of their life. What did I say? 99%. Okay. Hold on. Most of us are already poor. It's not a prophecy. The essence of this program is to change the odds. Am I correct? Nigeria, for the last uh, count, is the capital of poverty in the world by statistics. So it's not me that said it. Now, I was talking with an accelerator program in the UK and in Nigeria, we're making the collaborations. Nigeria has the highest number in Africa of registration of entrepreneurs, yet still become the capital of poverty in the world. Because businesses that scale require sophistication, write it down. It requires a higher level of knowledge. All the people you saw here today, even though they appear simple, they are not simple people. Research is involved. Knowledge is involved. Practice is involved. Dimension is involved. But why are there so many coaches online in Nigeria, so many trainers, so many people, and yet it's still the capital of poverty in the world? It's because knowledge is fundamental to creating wealth and sustaining it. So today, part of what I want to do is, first of all, I enjoyed myself right here today. I had a lot of fun. I told Excel 
that is actually the one that was supposed to speak on this event, on this my particular topic to disrupt you, which I'm going to talk about. When I flew in from Portacot, I'm from Abuja yesterday, this morning, I landed at the Portacot airport by 9 o'clock. The driver came to pick me up with the military, with the military personnel. We got to the, about Port, I mean, over at Portacot Road, there was a big hold up with trailers all over the place. We had to take another route. I spent three hours inside the bush, traveling to the creeks. I thought I was going to be kidnapped. For the first time, I felt uncomfortable in this part of the world. I had to send Ikenna the picture of where I said, I'm in the middle of nowhere coming to this place. And I said to myself, this is very terrible. So we can't pretend not to acknowledge the level of poverty in our country. Now, let's write this down. Laziness is not a physical thing. Laziness is a mental thing. If you can't study or read to have an idea and hold that idea long enough to develop that idea to a product, you are a lazy person. In other words, you want to write this down. There are so much hard-working, lazy people. Do you understand that? There's so many people that are working hard, but they're using the hard work to pretend to shadow the fact that they're not studying, they're not reading, they're not thinking. Okay? So to get started, how many of you want to become billionaires? Raise your hand. Become billionaires. Okay. Really? Great. Put your hands together. How many of you are really working hard to become billionaires? Raise your hand. All right. Now, I was coaching some billionaires in my session, and most of the people, the difference in what they do Write this down. The difference between a billionaire and a millionaire is not the hard work they do. The millionaires, the people that are poor people, they work very hard. The people that are billionaires still work very hard. The difference in the two is the expectation they have out of their hard work. What's the difference? Now watch this. I'll give you an example. If you go to the gym to carry weight and do some aerobics and Hussein Bolt is beside you doing the same amount of reps, it's the same muscle sparks that will happen. It's the same reflex of muscles, dopamine. All of those adrenaline will come. The same thing with Hussein Bolt. The difference between you and Usain Bolt is expecting to run in the Olympics. You are not expecting to run in the Olympics. So it's expectations that they have that changes the work they do to a high level of outcome. This year alone, okay, if you go to my Instagram, I have less than 5,000, less than 6,000 people there. But already we have done close to a million dollars in revenue the difference is not in the amount of work I put in. The difference is what? Expectation. So, but the first step is this. Learning leads to growth. Write it down. Write the word statement down. Learning leads to growth. Learning leads to growth. And write this down. Knowledge is the waste product of growth. Knowledge is the waste product of learning, sorry. Knowledge is the waste product of learning. What leads to growth? What leads to growth? Hard work? No. Business? Investment? Now, listen to this. There are so many people who have businesses, but they're not growing. The business is not growing. Am I correct? My sister talked about, she invested money last year. I know about it. told me about it. Okay? And she almost lost the money. So what leads to growth is what? What leads to growth? And what is the waste product of learning? What did I call it? What did I, what did I qualify knowledge as? Now, any time a knowledge creates a result, the knowledge becomes useless to the person that created the result, which means... If you want a new result, what happens? You have to learn something new. So now I was having that discussion sometime with some, some people who are doing very well, and they have gotten to the point they are no longer growing. I said, because you are trying to recycle old knowledge. 
because what led you to where you are is not enough to take you to where you're going. Okay? So write this down again. Don't clap yet. Learning leads to what? What does it lead to? And what is the waste product of learning? Now, what do I call the waste product? If you want to learn how to read English, you have to learn A, B, C. Am I correct? Once you've learned A, B, C, do you need to learn it again? What do you do with it? You begin to learn how to read. But listen to this. Why knowledge is very critical and important is it helps those who are about to get the result you already got. Does it make sense? Knowledge becomes useful again when it becomes useful to those that were about to get the same result. Now, what that means is, I have seen people who have built businesses, but there's no one that can do well by them. I have seen people who have companies. The company is not growing because they are not transferring the knowledge to their staff. I have seen people who have built Ugochuku and Sons, and when they die, Ugochuku becomes poor. Because they are not transferring the knowledge they have to the next people who are coming forward. Does it make sense? So write this down again. Your life is determined by the definitions that you have about concept. Your life is determined by definitions, not by effort. I'm seeing uh, my brother here, Sabinus. I'm seeing Emma Cannabis. I'm seeing Nelly. If you join Nelly's business, if you, have, if you start the bank alert business, without having the concept and the mindset of these people, you won't get the same result. You won't get the same result. All the time, I see people try to do what people are doing, they didn't get the same result. So, the knowledge of a concept helps you to manipulate the practice. Write it down. The knowledge of concept, the knowledge you have about a concept and a subject helps you to manipulate or modify the practice, even when circumstances of the original person changes. Does it make sense? Your knowledge about a concept is more important than the practice of the concept. Because if the circumstances upon which you get the first result changes, and you don't understand the concept, you won't get the result again. And that's why... Any results you cannot repeat, you borrow the first one. Am I making sense? I'm going to ask you questions to see if I'm making sense. But listen to this. I have seen Chichi, Nelly. I've seen Emeka Nobis. What they did last year to get results is not what they're doing this year to get results. Am I correct? If you follow what they did last year, you won't get the same result they get this year. Am I correct? So what does that mean to you? I give an example. How many of you have been driving a car before and the car stops on the road? You started the car from your house, got in the middle of the road, and the car stopped, and you couldn't start it. Raise your hand. And someone comes in in the same car without bringing any tool, open the brain box or the start button, and they remove something and touch two wires, and the car started. What's the difference between the two of you? He has knowledge of the concept of how a car is built. So I am not so much excited about you starting the business as I am about you understanding about how business works. And that brings me to the three types of learning you're supposed to have before you live in this class. Three types of training. The first one is theoretical training, which, is, which explains the process and concept of a subject. The first type of training is what? Theoretical training. What does it explain? It explains concept and process. Because I see people in this country, everybody's trying to make it. Nobody's trying to understand concept. Nobody's trying to understand subject. The second type of training is tactical training, which is a training that happens in the field. Someone met me today, and she was one of the people trying to talk to Nelly. They rounded her up. I said, don't worry. Network to Nelly. I will take you to Nelly for relationship. If you get to be part of Nelly's life, you will understand what Nelly can never teach you in the class. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Now write this down. Teachings bring awareness. Relationship bring discipline. Community brings wealth. 
The best you can get from this training today is that your mind is open. You become aware of possibilities. You know you can make it. But not all possibilities, write this down, is probable in your life. Not all possibility is what? Probable. Now, what is possibility? It can happen. I told you today, I asked you a question, how many of you want to become billionaires? You raise your hand. It's a possibility. But what are the odds that you can become a billionaire? What are the things you need to learn? What are the things you need to do? If you don't have those concepts, even though you desire to become a billionaire, the odds is still stacked against you. So I'm going to show you something on my slide right now. That's going to show when I said the chances that most of you are not going to be success, wealthy in, in, in business, you think I was joking. Now watch this. Can I get my slide now? Now look at this. What are the chances of you becoming a millionaire in dollars? This year alone, we've done close to a million dollars. And guess what? I have not done active marketing. What I have done this year was to finish my book, and I'm about to launch my online masterclass because my personal classes are very expensive. I have to make it available to a lot of Nigerians. And I've told Emeka today, all of them, both Emeka, Mrs. Nelly, Mrs. Choma, and Mr. Sabinus, and all of these people, I am going to make sure that every one of them are going to be part of my inner circle to make sure I have the leverage that I want. So what are the chances to become a millionaire? I've seen Nigerians, when somebody makes one million naira, he says a millionaire. That's a lie. You have only $2,000. If you don't have one million dollars, you're not a millionaire. Any millionaire here, raise your hand. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the question is, you are glorifying poverty. $2,000 is $1.4 million. And when I say millionaire, stand up. You stand up. Hell no. Not yet. So, watch this. Now look at this. This is statistics. I didn't make it. First, how many millionaires do we have in Africa? One. 131,097 millionaires in Africa. Out of that is 125,000 millionaires. That's $1 million. 6,200 multi-millionaires. 275,200 cent millionaires. Those who have $100 million. And then 22 billionaires in the whole of Africa. If you take 131,497 against 1.4 billion, 1.3 billion people. The chances of you becoming a millionaire in Africa is 0 0.006. Check it, it's there. It's not my statistics. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to disrupt you this, this, this afternoon and give you the code of what you could do. Okay? Now look at this again. These are the determining factors that can make you become very successful. Number one is age. We'll write it down. At what age did you come in contact with knowledge of wealth? At what age? Most of us are 25, 30, 35. You have no idea or concept about knowledge of business and investment. You don't have that. So the chances that your effort is based on the wrong knowledge. Okay. That's age. So, but if you're below 25, below 30 here, there's still hope for you because you have not crossed a particular age where your brain is no longer as effective as it should be. Right? The second thing that can work against you or for you is race. Write this down, guys. If you're a black person in the world, the chances of you being a millionaire is smaller. The slim, the odds are against you as an African. So if you're not white, Married in a rich family, then you're going to have to worry about something. But the last part there, which is the key, which is how I got where I am today. What is it called? Now, this is the leveler. Write this down. Effort is a common denominator. Knowledge is the differentiator. All men must make effort, but not all effort leads to success. It is the quality of knowledge in your effort that determines how to come of the effort. That's why, even though you can be here today and you walk away from this class and all you take is all I said without going to do more research, this, you'll be having an illusion of knowledge. 
Are you with me? Are you with me? Now, I'm going to tell you a story. I was teaching knowledge anatomy in a university. Matter of fact, it was in Babcock University some years ago. I was 35 years old at the time. I was teaching the anatomy of knowledge. And I want you to know, I worked in J.P. Morgan in the U.S., and when I was in America, I found out that the founding fathers of America were men of faith. These men believed that they have the capacity of God in them to do whatever they can. I saw on the dollar bill, in God we trust. That particular faith they have in the belief that they have, that they can be anything they want, was the difference maker in their lives. So, as I was teaching about knowledge, as you can see it on the screen, in God we trust. Most of us here truly believe in God, but our concept of God makes us dependent on a God we don't see, rather than be the God that the world will see. That's the difference. You try to call him, but they act as him for the world. That's the difference. Now, watch here. I was teaching in a place, and this woman, her name is Elijah Brown, the permanent secretary of Lagos State at a particular time. She said, Mr. Ogo, I want you to come and teach my friends who are professors. And they were about 65 years old, all of them, most of them. And they were in their 60s, and they were all PhD holders. I was 35 at the time. I walked into the hall, and the first statement I made, like I always do, try to make everybody feel uncomfortable, is, and I said to them, if you are an old man or old woman here, I want you to stand on your feet. And guess what? They all stood up as old people. I said, I want you to leave the hall right now because I don't speak to old people. How do you think they felt? They got mad at me. They said, who brought this little brat to come and talk to us anyhow? And I said, before you throw me away, please give me a chance. I want you to bring your phone and type the meaning of the word old. And they typed the meaning of the word old. What came out was antiquated, out of use, useless, and irrelevant. I said, where I stand, I said, if you're still an old man, I want you to keep standing. They all sat down. What I found, and I told them, like, you're 65 years old, and you're a PhD holder, and this is the first time you're getting to know the meaning of the old for the first time. The question I asked people, what have you known the wrong way, and you've held on to it for the rest of your life, and it's not working? You're working hard, it's not showing. So most of you are growing up from bad parenthood. Most of us are growing up with wrong uncles. We are growing up in a very bad society. And all the knowledge we had has been corrupted knowledge that we celebrate the wrong things about life. But somehow it formed the fundamentals of who we believe we are. Is that correct? And you're using it to work hard and hustle. And it's like what you're doing is not working. There's nothing wrong with your effort. Everything is wrong with the quality of knowledge that drives your effort. If you correct that knowledge, everything else will work. So now, you know what I found? Whatever the society has destroyed or made bad, you can correct with study. Write it down. Whatever anyone has destroyed, by reason of wrong examples, wrong 419 mentality. Sometimes we think Yahoo boys are those who do internet fraud. Yahoo mentality is instant result mentality. Most of you are Yahoo in legitimate business. Anytime you want result without process, that's Yahoo mentality. Does it make sense? So it's just like seeing all the people in front of you. I see, I know, I know um, my sister, Chema. I know Nelly. These guys work hard. I trace nobbies. I have not known Sabinus a lot of time, but I can tell you these dudes work really hard on content creations, and they do it a lot of times. So coming here is not enough. It's not a substitute for studying and getting the right concept. That's what I want to say. Now, do not be distracted by the glory of the people that has results. Be inspired by the discipline of process. Does it make sense? Do not take away the vibe. Do not take away the, the, the trying to run around them to take pictures. I want you to work hard to find yourself in their space or follow the trail of process. So what I found is, the greatest obstacle to success is no longer ignorance, it's the illusion of success, it's the illusion of knowledge. Okay? I met young people, I was here last year, I met young people, everybody you talks, I'm a coach, I'm an internet digital marketer. The quantum and the quality of knowledge you have is not enough to take it to where you want to be. And some of them, I couldn't bring them close, I couldn't give them mentorship, because they already presented themselves as coach. When you're a coach, what do you need? Does it make sense? Okay. 
So watch here on the board. So you can see. So education is the last one. Now write this down. Knowledge is a leveler. Knowledge is a leveler. If you don't have age on your side, if you don't have race on your side, the only thing you have to close every gap that you lost in age and lost in race is what? Is knowledge. And if, if you have a pen and you want to make a big note, I want you to open up a different page from your note. I want you to write these particular three words now. There are three levels of knowledge you must have for you to become wealthy and rich. Three levels of knowledge. Okay? I was speaking in Tinkation, and I'm so young, vibrant, talented people. And they were all, everybody just praising them. I know they'll be broke sooner or later. I've seen so many stars who started well, made a lot of money. They didn't know that money that cannot be preserved will not last. I've seen people who were so successful, stars, great people, make money, running and shining. There's always a new star to take out the old star. It's always happening. So it's not enough to make money, write this down, but learn how to preserve money and then learn how to multiply the money and learn how to transfer the wealth to your next generation. It's very key for. Okay? So three levels of knowledge. The first one, the first one is revelational knowledge. This is knowledge you get from your relationship with God. I have seen a lot of people don't have this type of knowledge. They are not embedded in this inspirational knowledge of figuring out their divine place in an earthly realm. If you see the dollar bill shown to you, it says, in God we trust. America is the largest economy in the world, but up to today, it still has the world in God we trust. Most of the times, and I, there's a particular pastor that is very popular. I love him. I love him so much, honestly. Let me tell you why I love him. I don't care what to say about him. He's getting results. But some of the things people say from what the man does is very deceptive to the people without knowledge. Number one, what God cannot do does not exist. When God is actually capitalizing on you, I agree with you on that statement. But your understanding of that statement is not my understanding of that statement. What God cannot do does not. It means whatever God wants to do, he wants to do it through me. Not that I'm going to pray to call him to do it for me because he has made me in his qualities. Does it make sense? What God cannot do does not. It's the way people use it. They use it as an excuse not to do hard, sophisticated thinking and research. Does it make sense? Now, there's another one they're saying now. Help me. Abba Cha. Help me. One person, please. No. Abba Cha, Abba Cha something. God will decide. Which means they're saying all the effort you're making is useless. It's only God that decides. Those are very delicate statement that takes the uninformed and makes you to rely on a God who by every means rely on you to fulfill his goals on earth. So, they are very dangerous. If the uninformed comes to those kind of statement, it's very, it's very, it's very dangerous. Alright? So if you go back to this slide now, what are the chances of becoming a millionaire? Now listen to this. Now I'm going to go straight to Africa. Now look at this. Look at this. If you see on the screen, the average Asians in the U.S., the chances of a, a, a Chinese person or a Japanese person to become successful in America is 22%. Why? They don't come there to look for jobs. They come there to own companies. That was what teacher was talking about, ownership. The second one is the white Americans. White Americans have lesser percentage to be successful in America than Asians who come there. But what is the least there? The blacks. The blacks. Why? They came there as slaves. And most of us who go to all these countries go there because we want greener pastures. Now write this down. Wealth is not in a place. Wealth is in people. Wealth is not in a place. Where is wealth? Wealth is in people. I, I was monitoring. Uh, Sabinus went to London some few 
Last week, am I correct? Two weeks ago. And everybody there in London welcomed him as a hero. But he lives in Nigeria. Does it make sense? But his value is global. So you don't really need to come out of here to travel to some place for you to create wealth. Once you understand you're part of the God presence on earth, your, your idea is valid. Say it again. Your ideas are valid. Okay? So I'm going to give you four factors that's going to help you when I close. And then I'm going to make an announcement tonight. So these are the four factors. I took my boy to my village. I was born in Abba. Ndoke. I went to Ndoke Primary School. Abba, say it. Say it now. I went to Holy Ghost College away. I graduated from Imsu. My nickname, my nickname in secondary school was the Million Dollar Man. My nickname in secondary school was the Million Dollar Man. Now watch this, follow me. I had, I was born 1973. I had polio one year, six months after I was born. In my first year in the university, in Imsu University, I bought my first BMW. What does that mean? As a child, I saw that my situation was to prove to people that physical challenges cannot stop the mental growth. But if you have no physical challenge and have a mental problem, you're already a poor man, no matter what happens to you. So the problem here is this. Most of us, we are disabled at home by these four factors. Number one, parents. We are born in a poor family. Our mother and father were poor. So the first person that spoke to you when you were a little child was a poor person. If you are born in a poor family like me, can I see your hands up? The day I was born, the day I was born, watch this, the person that received me, the person that received me the first time on the planet Earth and said welcome was a poor, poor woman. So the first statement that went into my mind was a poor, poor statement. And I tell you what, when I left the hospital, and came back to where we live. Because my mom and dad, we are poor people by some definitions, right? Which means I was brought back into a community of poor people. That's induction. So, so what does it mean? The innocent me had my mind being introduced to a life I was not given a chance to choose. Can you see where I'm going? So for six years, my mom, my dad, spoke to my mind based on what they know without giving me the option to choose whether I want to be poor or rich. So I've already started receiving programming in my mind. Is that correct? Plus the added, added physical challenge I already have. Now when I became six years old, I was sent to secondary school. I took my boy to my village. My secondary school is in the village at Omanaboy Hide in Mbise. And the teachers that taught me from primary one to primary six, we are all poor people. Am I correct? So write on your notes, 12 years of poverty instruction. Now, a seminar cannot, dis cannot take it away. Right? So 12 years, I want to show you something. Now, 12 years, I was being talked to. My uncle, my sister, my brother, my... So generational poverty, called collateral poverty, was introduced. So, and then, I entered university. All the lecturers there were not rich people. Uh, were they? They were regular employees who were getting there to get paid. They were not teaching me how to become successful. They were teaching me how to practice what they are not even practicing. So for 18 years, for 18 years, your life has been inundated. Your life has been reprogrammed over and over by activities, incidences, affirmations for 18 years. And you think because you showed up in the church on Sunday to disappear in one minute, not going to happen. But guess what? There's one thing nobody can take away from you. The willpower to choose another life. So disruption is saying what happened in the past is enough. 
Disruption means to make obsolete an event, to cut short an event and prevent it from happening. Now, if you're going to disrupt somebody, and the subject today is disrupt you. Now, I've told you two, two factors. Number one, the parent and the teachers formed you. So whether or not you like it, a decision to be poor was given to you before you realized to make that decision. Is that correct? So when everybody's now struggling in Nigeria, people are saying they are now millionaires. You made 10, 000, you made 10 million. 10 million, 40 million is $20,000. You're not a millionaire, guy. Okay? It's because if you look at your family history and compare it to 10 million, you think you're a great man. So the reason why that was happening is even in your own struggle, you think you're doing well. Make sense? So I want to tell everybody right here, move from that survival mode of I have made it out of my family poverty into a creative mode using God's own parameter to measure your capacity to be more. All right? Now, watch this. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay. So before I round up, who has gotten something already? Raise your hand. If you've got something already, raise your hand. Give me the microphone. Give me the microphone. I just want to make somebody say something to me. If you've got something already, raise your hand. Anybody? Less hands are going up now. If you've got something, raise your hand. If you've got something, raise your hand. Anybody? Okay, microphone, please, quickly. Yes. Yes, yes, one person. One person. Stand up. You've really got something really nice. Yes. Yes. What is the one thing that stood out for you today? The waste product of learning. Yes. Um, is knowledge. The results you get today, it's what you're going to do tomorrow. For where you're going tomorrow, the result of yesterday is not going to, or the process that got you the result yesterday is not going to be enough to take you to the next level where you need to go to tomorrow. And so you have to constantly keep trying to learn every time in order to climb higher. And so a lot of times, a lot of people are not, there's, there's a word I want to introduce, which is ambition. So a lot of people are not ambitious enough and that's what, well, that's what causes us to want to look at where we're coming from and we say, hey, I've made this money. I'm better than the rest of my family. And as such, I have arrived. So there is no more incentive to want to grow further. Please put, right? your, hands together. put your hands together for my brother right there. <laughs> Let me tell you why I know this guy is on another level. He recognized what simple mind cannot recognize. Number one, understanding that knowledge is a waste product of learning. Once an outcome has been achieved, the particular process that led there becomes obsolete. For the very person, if he wants to get a new result, he has to start that process again for the next level. Does it make sense? But knowledge is powerful when it becomes useful to the people coming behind you. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? And what shows that your growth came by learning is because you documented what led to your outcome. Does it make sense? What shows your growth came by learning is why you documented how you got there in the first place. Appreciate it. One more person. I need the lady right at this point. I need the lady at this point. Yes, give to the lady over there quickly. Yes, yes, give to her. Yes. So many of you will not understand me because it takes knowledge to understand knowledge. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me. So many of you have not read the book in the last 12 months, if I open your brain, I will see cobwebs and cockroaches in there. So as I'm teaching, there is no corresponding knowledge to understand the depth of what I'm saying. And, and when you go home, they ask you, what did you learn? He said, that guy was too much. I said, no, 
What lesson did you pick from what he thought? He said he was something else. But you, you went to SM Fest, where you're supposed to learn how to build business. He said, guess what? I was blessed. So, so, so it takes me about 45 minutes to bring you out of the doldrum of inertia, out of the oblivion of lack of knowledge, to the consciousness of your presence before I can begin to open your mind for the next level of your awareness. Does it make sense? So, so what we're going to do is this. Yes, give to my sister. Somebody, she want to say something, please. Yes, give to her. Quickly. Yes, quickly, quickly. Let's do it. I'd like to point out three things you mentioned. Okay. You said something about age, race, and education. To me, I know sometimes as an um, entrepreneur or people growing and learning, it becomes difficult and we use an excuse for where we're coming from. We don't have these opportunities. We don't do this. But then, I've learned today that there are people who had nothing and they pushed, they did things that we, on our own head, me, myself, I'm telling myself, I can't do because I am not exposed to some things that I feel I need to be exposed to before I get to that point I want to be in life. So I'm learning that I don't really need anything. Everything I need is within me. And once I'm ready to learn, I would achieve all. Let's put us together for her right there. So let me close. Let me close. I, I mean, I, there's a lot to say. Anything you cannot define overwhelms you. Anything you can define, you can modify. Did you write it down? Anything you cannot define, anything you can define. Now write this down. I'm going to close in five, in five, six minutes. Life does not reward you according to your effort. Life rewards you according to your knowledge. According to knowledge. Now if you go to Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2, it says, it is the glory of God... To conceal a matter and the honor of kings is to search. Which means God gets glory by hiding things. It takes a king to study. Which means study is a royal behavior. So nothing is difficult. You're simply untrained. So when I see people struggle with stuff, it's just like assuming because you came here today and you get inspired and you see by reason of inspiration you're going to become great. That's a fallacy. That's a lie. Does it make sense? It's not complete. So the second level of knowledge is theoretical knowledge, which is understanding process and strategy. You can't get it in a seminar like this. This seminar will give you some key points, bullet points. But each person that came here that today that is sustaining their result is coming out of a process of diligence in study and learning and observation. And I cannot come and, because normally I used to inspire people a lot and they, get, they fall over the seat and they still remain the same way last time I came back. So this time, I'm whooping your brain. So the, talk, the second level of knowledge is theoretical knowledge, which is talking about strategy and process. And then the last one, is execution mentorship, competence and mentorship. Are you with me? Is what? Competence and mentorship. Why is this important? I found out, quite frankly, that no matter how much you love God, and no matter how much God loves you, if you're void of knowledge, all of his blessings may not be available the way you want it. Am I correct? And that's why he says in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, he says, the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings is to search. And write it down. There are three levels of search in the quest for wealth. I'm going to ask the same question again. How many of you want to make billions of dollars in the next five years? Raise your hand. Billions of dollars. Next five years, okay? Now, I'm going to show you this first step to start. Because this year, by 2023, I want to hit my $10 million mark. That's where I'm going. I'm tired of making millions of dollars a, a year. And for me to do that, I have to move up from niche market to the mass market. That's where all of my sisters, all of them are right now. I'm going to come to your feet to learn how to do that. Now watch this. 
It is the glory of God to do what? Can I can have a screen. It's the glory of God to conceal and the honor of kings is to what? Search. And there are three levels of search in your quest for wealth. So on your note, write this down. Three levels of search in my quest for wealth. In your quest to become wealthy, there are three levels of search. I'm going to close with this. The first level of search is to look at. To look at. Meaning, your desire for wealth creation is based on the things you saw, the things you feel. How many of you have driven through a, a, a neighborhood of big, beautiful houses? As you're driving by, you saw nice houses. You say, I claim it in Jesus' name. Raise your hand. That is sensual. Write it down, it's sensual. How many of you have passed a beautiful car on, on the road? I saw Sabino's new car, white GLE Mercedes 2020, uh, the latest version, and everybody online, I'm sure, are claiming that what, whatever God did for him should do it for you. Am I correct? Your need for that particular quest is based on what your eyes can see. That's sensual. The second level of search is to look into Second level of search. I'm closing with this final thought. Your, your quest for wealth based on your experience, based on your family experience, based on your life experience. How many of you say, God, I've suffered this year. I don't want to be poor again. I want to be rich in my life. Raise your hand. So the reason why you said that was because you're poor. So the reason why you're saying that you want to be rich is because of your poverty. In other words, poverty is the motivation for you to become rich. Now, the last one is to look through, which is your quest for wealth based on what God said. What's the first one? Look at, what is it coming from? From your physical senses. You saw a beautiful car, you saw a good car, you had bank a lot today, you say, I want to make it. It's because of the things you saw. What's the second one? Where's it coming from? Your personal experience. You want God to bless you because you're suffering. So which means the sponsoring thought, the motivation, the ulterior motive behind you asking God to bless you or bless the work of your hand is based on your experience, which is more not a good one. What's the last one? Which is what? Based on what God said. What if you're not knowledgeable about what God said? What if you have no knowledge about what God said? And this is how to practice it. Jesus said, if you ask, finish it, you receive, if you seek, you find. And if you knock, access granted. So three levels of stars. Match it down. To look, okay, look at, is to ask. Sir, I want you to come. To, is, that, is that your wife? Please come together with your wife. Please put your hands together as they come forward. Please, yes, come. I want you to give me a microphone to her. Please come. Yes, yes. Please clap as they come forward. Yes, yes. Mama, that you want to talk? Do you want to? Yes, yes, yes. So now it says it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, and the honor of kings is to search. Can I have that on the screen? So write this word down. What is the synonym for conceal? So let's change it now. It's the glory of God to hide. What's the honor of kings? Who hides it? Who hides it? Who is supposed to search it? When I was growing up, I've gone to church. They made me believe that God has done everything for me. By extension, I mean I didn't have to worry about nothing. But the more I try to depend on that, the poorer I become. But when I began to study and search, I began to change my situations around. Mama, Daddy wants to come over here. So we have a scenario here. So come over here. Yeah, Mama, go over here. Yes, give her the microphone. I want you to go over here. Now, this is God right here. This is God right here. And that is man. And he says, if you ask, you will receive. Is that correct? If you seek, you will find. If you knock, access will be granted. Let's take it again. If you ask, you receive. If you search, you will find. And if you knock, access will be granted. So question I want you to ask, why does God hide things? Now, mommy, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to practice the first level of search, which is to look at, which means I want you to look at God. Your husband is now God in this contest. This is man. 
I want you to ask God to bless you based on the things you can see with your eyes on him. His cap, his glasses, his, his phone. Okay? Remember the question, why does God hide things? Because we all come here, want God to bless us. Nobody wants to study. Why does God hide things? Right? So I want you to ask God. Now, the, write this down. The Greek word for ask means to beg. The Greek word for ask is begging. If you go to your Bible right now and check it, and it says the word ask, and check on the meaning of that word, what you're going to see is beg. So I want you to beg God to, to bless you based on the things you can see. So ask for his cup, his glasses, or his phone. I want you to beg for it. I want you to watch. I have not spoken to you since you came. I want you to watch. And when she begs you, I want you to give her. It must be something on him. Yes, something you can see based on what your eyes can see. Okay, okay there God, I, I, I really like his Th- car. That's not begging. <laughs> okay. That's not begging. Okay, Beggars I want, I want have no dignity. Beggars have no sense of worth. So I want you to beg. It's difficult, it's difficult for her to beg because she knows her husband. If I put a stranger here, she will beg. How come God is your father and you're begging him? So I want you to beg for what your eyes can see. Now watch this. God, please, can I have this cup? I really like it. That's not begging. I, I, I want you to, I want you to. Please, can I have the cup? Please, okay. can I have that cup? Watch. Give, yeah, give to her. Thank you. Did God go back? Yeah. Did he go back? Yeah. Is that a gap between the receiver and the giver? Yeah. So when you ask God for things, he gives to you without relationship. So the, dev, so the devil comes here and says, give it to me. So you begged for that contract, and God granted that contract. But there's no relationship between you and God. So after six months, you're broke again. I want you to go back and beg again. Beg for something else. Something else. Please, can I have the phone, your phone? Phone. Yes, please, please. Did you still go back? That is why you keep receiving things and keep losing the things and not sustaining it. It is difficult to maintain a gift whose relationship you've not kept. Now, I want you to return this back to God. Why does God hide things? It's the glory of God to conceal and the honor of kings is to search. Madam, I don't want you to beg God anymore I want you to search him to see what he's got. Don't beg him, search him. Stop. Has he said anything yet? No. Is he close to God? No. The reason why God wants you to search is in search you find closeness with him. She has not said anything. Now, God can feel his breath. You can touch her now. And search the back pocket. The deeper you go, the more you closer. So why does God hide things? Because he wants you to search. Now, watch this. Yes, time's up, time's up. I'm closing now. When he came close to God, he searched him. He didn't find phone. He found the factory for phone. When he searched God's pocket, he found the factory for cap. Once your eyes and your mind have seen resources of God, you can't ask for things anymore. Now, I want you to tell her, I'm going to give you the latest iPhone. When she has seen the factory of iPhone, would you accept it? Would you accept it? If he gives you one iPhone after he has seen the factory of iPhone, would you accept it? No, no, no. I want to, I want to have the factory. You, you want I to have, want to have the factory with me always. Please put your hands together for yourself right now. Thank you. Put your hands together. Appreciate it. So, 
Now, the reason why I came is I want to teach you the process and the mechanics of wealth creation. How many of you want to learn? This year alone, I've done close to $1 million. How many of you would like to know how to do that? Okay. Tomorrow, there's going to be a master class at Protea Hotel. Am I correct? Protea Hotel. And that session, how many of you want to be there tomorrow? Raise your hand. Okay. Now, listen to this. Write this down. You teach the ignorant, you advise the wise. Tomorrow, I'm going to spend time with a few of you who are really have worked hard enough. You've done 10 million, 50 million, 100 million, 500 million. Unfortunately, if you made 500 million last year, it would have been $1 million. If you made 500 million this year, it's still not $1 million. Am I correct, Angie? Eh? So if you want to learn the processes on how to create wealth in this continent that meets global standard, I want you to see your hands up. I want you to be on your feet right now. If you really want to learn that, let's get on our feet. You want to learn the processes on how to create global results, build systems that can take you to the global standard and you can become successful and then be able to scale up your business and replicate it. Okay? Thank you. Now, it's going to cost you 500,000 there. How many of you still want to be there? Keep standing. Now, the reason why I say that, the reason why I say that, I always put a very premium price for my sessions. Let it be that you can't afford it. Then I can give you a discount. Is that nice? How many of you still want to be there? Sit down now, sit down now. I want you to sit down. Tomorrow's session, Angie, uh, Nelly, of course, you're going to be there with me already. Sit there, everybody, sit down. How many of you will really want to learn the processes that I take through to create wealth to the global standard. I want you to see your hands up. Okay, good, well, great. Now, do you have my account number? Do you have the account number ready on the screen? Okay, they're going to put the account number on the screen. I'm going to give you a huge discount. The first 10 people to pay in 50,000 in that account will be there for me tomorrow. Would that be nice? The first 10 people. So what's going to happen? The account number is going to be there after 10, the class and that promo will close. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a good time today. Please put your hands together for yourself. I will have, I will have my sister, Mrs. Choma, there tomorrow with me on the master class to share some of that secrets with us tomorrow. Stand, stand up, please. Chama will be there tomorrow with me in the master class. My sister Nelly will be there tomorrow in the master class. Put your hands together for him. And where is the Mecca Nobis? And Mecca will be there tomorrow in the master class. And Sabinus? <laughs> Listen, gentlemen, thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow by 12 p.m. God bless you. Alpha. Make you know they bother with me, your father. What you wanna buy away with me? Come on now! Like Thank mother. you so much, sir. <laughs> I don't know like you when you call me. You should stand up and actually give me a clap innovation and a standing ovation.